my place in history. I must first point out that my life and person were briefly referred to in the History of the Jews written by Josephus for the Roman governor and presented to the Roman emperor. Josephus briefly noted that Jesus, who attempted to overthrow law and order and the governance of the Romans, was punished and crucified. It has been argued that this was some other Jesus recorded by Josephus, but this is not so. I, who later became the Christ, who performed so-called miracles of healing and materialization, was the insurrectionist. But I was no rabble-rouser. I did not deliberately stir people up to defy the Romans and disrupt law and order. I was a rebel against existing Jewish traditions, and because when I emerged from my six-week sojourn in the desert, I saw a better way to think and live, and I tried to pass on my knowledge to my fellow Jews with little success. It is important you should understand that the pressure of public opinion weighed with my followers. While I truly believed I had brought a soul-saving message to the Jews and was the Messiah, the Son of God, they were also of the world, trying to relate to the world as best they could. Therefore, although they knew my reactive feelings towards the Jewish beliefs, they were not happy to dispense with the Old Testament altogether, since it had supported and kept the Jews together throughout their history. In the interest of preserving what they thought to be valuable in the Old Dispensation, they suppressed any description of the person I was. My disciples and Paul built their own edifice of sacred beliefs on which they wanted to preserve from my life and teachings. They only taught and consolidated what they deemed to be valuable to people, Jews and Gentiles alike, at that time and in the future. Consequently, they distilled what they could use and let go most of what I termed the secrets of the kingdom of God, for they never understood them, nor found them desirable in the creation of a new perception of the divine, the Father. To preserve the Jewish belief in salvation from punishment for sins by means of sacrifice in the temple, the person of Jesus was adopted as the supreme sacrifice who had paid for men's sins by my crucifixion. This belief served many purposes at that time. It gave my death on the cross a valid and heroic reason. It proved to the people that I was Son of God who had carried out a specific mission to the very end of my life. This belief also proved to be of great comfort to the Jews when their temple was destroyed by the Romans and led to many converts taking place. Many sects of Jews and Gentiles also did not believe in life after death. Consequently, it was greatly comforting to hear that Jesus Christ had overcome death and retained his body. To much human thought at that time, life was not possible without a body. Therefore, life after death could only mean the resurrection of the body. It also kept my name constantly alive in the minds of people. I was the historic figure who had valiantly died to ensure that men should be freed of all fear of hell and damnation, providing they believed in me. They could walk as freed men. It is only because my name has been kept alive to this very day that I am now able to come to you and give you the truth I so dearly wanted to share with people 2,000 years ago.